we are going to go on an adventure today. We're going to go see uh, if we can dodge some rain and go walk around Houston Woods, which is north of Oxford, Ohio. <laughs> it's a four-hour vacation. <laughs> so what trees are starting to turn yellow? Dad and I came to Houston Woods, which is north of Oxford, Ohio. We're at the Nature Center. They have a big lake. They have a lot of nice hiking, easy trails. So this is how we're going to get some exercise today. Okay, we just came in the Nature Center. Look at those trees to educate you on the trees of the areas. Great place. That's half an hour south of uh, Richmond area. Oh, look at the turtle. Yeah. You got a little one down here. Oh. Oh, there's a couple fish in here. There's one over there. Toad. Love those in my garden. That one's big. That's like a great grandpa toad. The garter snake. It's like he hears us. His little head is this side. Uh, he's little. <coughs> Box turtles up there. We always called them. They lived to be 150 years old. <coughs> Oh, that one wants to come out and visit. We don't have food, sorry. And down, let's see, oh, a water snake, northern water snake. It's just laying up there all perfect. Ooh. Oh, there's another snake. Oh, look, there's one. There's two snakes in here. Okay, these have a copperhead and a milk snake. A timber rattler and a gray rat snake. Oh, oh, look, like put my hand out there. Oh, he's big. See his rattler? Yeah. That snake is down, is inside its log. Okay. Yeah, that is a rattlesnake catcher. I think we have like one picture of you with them, but Lord, I always feared copperheads more when I was a kid and be it down home. They mm. drop a lot of mice in there to feed them. Uh-huh, yeah, no thanks. And they bat it, <coughs> and that venom aids in uh, digestion. I'm gagging right now. I bet you are too. Well, yeah. Put well, a big. That's a big one. Yeah. I never did kill one that big. Okay. Yo, we woke up the woodpecker. Wow. Dad's impressed with that deer. Deer hunting season starts on October 1st, and this I'm is the last week of September. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Well, we will just see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bats. Oh, look at that raccoon laying up there. Little bandit. Oh, look, that one's going to get you right up there behind you. 
Oh my gosh, look at that turkey. Well, if you're a hunter and you have really pathetic luck this year, come on in here and at least you can take a picture and pretend for the moment. There's another window over here, let's see. I think this is, is this their honeybee exhibit? It's all cleared out. That's always fun to see. And then, oh, for bird watching. Oh, yeah. If you just pause for a moment. Yeah. I got them in that one. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might find him. A great horned owl. Did you know that they're the most vicious killer of all of the animal kingdom? Really? Yes. And did you know that they're the only animal on earth that can eat a skunk? <laughs> They have no sense of smell. Oh. They can't smell and they just love dead skunks or catch a live skunk. Okay. And uh, and that's yeah. true because I see it on their fun facts right up there. So he's not joking, folks. Okay. <laughs> My name's Al. Your name's Al. The hoot, didn't I? Yeah, you got him to hoot when I turned it off. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at the eyebrows. Almost human like, aren't they? When they close her. Uh huh. Pull her top lids down. Looks like Uncle Charlie. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I move away in my orange sweater, and then he will talk to you. So the the video is terrible because he doesn't mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh. Red-tailed hawk. You know how to tell the boys from the girls? How? The girls have a uh, speckled bread. Come over here. See the all the different colors. Oh gosh. Now, the okay, I can see it here. Now I gotta zoom in. A male oh, my gosh. is snow white. Oh. So and the th female is colored. So this is a girl. Yeah. Okay. Video is a little rough today. God, bear with us. Yeah, I'm talking to the people. A rough-legged hawk and a red shoulder hawk live in here. Oh, I see them. This is the red shoulder hawk. These are really engaging. Look at ya. And then the rough-legged hawk. I'm going through two fences to find it. Whoo! There we go. Oh, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm not yeah, suffering. The only hawk that has feathers all the way down to the feet. Ah. It's that big eagle. He's just sitting here watching us, too. Okay. We picked a good day and a good time. Look at the toenails on that thing. Oh, it's watching us, talking to it. 
Okay. Dad wants you to see the toenails. Whoa. I wouldn't want to do those pedicures to get ready to show it fair. How old do you think that one is? Oh, about 20 years old. Well, this is, it doesn't cost anything except your gas. This is pretty awesome. I highly recommend it. Oh, I can smell one of them coming up. Smell what? You can smell it when you walk over here. Can you smell it? Like that's where the foxes are and stuff. Gosh, foxes smell like a petrified skunk smell. Okay. This is turkey vulture. It has a huge enclosure. And a, it's way through the fence. I'm not going to be able to go in there. It's just imagining. It's up on a big old dead tree branch. Warming in the sun. Poor thing. There's another eagle up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see up there. In the box. Let's see if I can get that owl to talk to me. <coughs> that made that eagle turn around. <coughs> Watch if he's looking. He got them all woke up. Everything is afraid of the hoot owl. <coughs> Well, don't do that then. That's scaring them. You're going to get us in trouble, Lester. Is that a peacock back there? What's way back there? No. Yeah. Is it in an enclosure? It's outside of that other fence. Okay. Oh, the smell is so strong from their scent glands and that. Oh, it's so strong. Dad can't smell it. Benef benefit of being old. You're smelling the urine. Yeah, the scent gland. Ooh. How can girls be attracted to that? That one's just laying there real calm. That one has no interest in dad hooting and hollering. But this one is wondering what is going on. Silver fox. That's a good looking bobcat. Yeah. That's how I feel. I need a good stretch and a nap. One guy saw one in trees in Markwood. I guess we got here at the right time. Gonna go to bed. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna get Chase out of here. It doesn't care. Take time to stop in at the park office out here at the marina area. I got some great information on a perfect trail um, to take dad on. And hopefully, if he doesn't feel like it today, we'll go. But definitely a place to take him that's an easy walk. You got to get close. Okay. You see that pine needle? Oh, yeah. It's floating on a spider web. Yeah. Oh, how spooky is that? 
I don't want to knock it down. <laughs> it's coming over for a close up. <laughs> There's one behind it. Oh, yeah. see, one, two, three. I don't want to spook them because we're in their habitat. There's a young one. Weigh about 60 pounds. <laughs> I thought we should be seeing deer. They're one. I bet we see more. They're wanting to come down to the beach. That's where we're at, the beach area. This is the trail going back to the sugar house and a fishing pier that's handicap accessible. And there's pawpaw trees all along both sides. <coughs> a guide had said these are more hilly and rugged trails but they go through some of the older forest area and it's beautiful in here hold it right now the tin thing is golden yellow and way over on the next third spot you can spot a plant that far away or more yeah just from its color But they brought the turkeys back. The turkeys eat the seed and their gizzard crushes the seeds and destroys it. Oh. Now if a songbird eats the seed and disperses it later, it'll come up and grow. But the turkeys are taking the ginseng right out. and still be there for another hundred. Just think of all the history that has come and gone past that log from the time that it was a seed and even now just laying there. All the history that has passed by it. Coming back down to the lake area now. Right here. Do you feel dirty? No. You better move then. Dad, you <laughs> I know what you're gonna do. <laughs> and he's <laughs> she's she said it was hilly and rugged, but the trails are so wide and nice here that It's a, a safer place. Look at that. That tree, I can see both sides of that tree around you. <laughs> wow. Isn't that just mind boggling? Think even a hundred years ago, a Native American was like leaning up against there or a Revolutionary War soldier had worked his way through and was trying to figure out where he was going to claim land. <laughs> Civil War soldier took a break on his way home. Man sure can't create all this. I'm riding a dead horse. 
his head's cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the kids that jump off of that all the time. <coughs> and that's what you do. You just cut and roll back and let... Think of all the nature living underneath all those logs. It looks like people are pretty good about sticking to the trail, too. He's determined to get us soaking wet. See, this little tree is about six or eight years old. It's a beak. And there's a big ravine right there. Boy, I could sure get lost back in here. Oh, sure. I have to lean way back to get that one. That's a big beach tree. Hug it. <laughs> Look how yeah. big. And people carve, huh? you could carve your name. <clears throat> like that little tree, I can make a mark on it, and that mark will stay there for the rest of its life. No matter how big the tree gets, the spot gets bigger along with it. This is a good place for somebody with Parkinson's to practice their walking slow and picking up their feet to not trip on roots while you can still see them. A lot of the weeds have died back. But this plant here is about the size of a ginseng plant. They get bigger than that, but that'd be like a, a three prong, and they branch out. Yeah, but that's not. No, and they have a big pot of red berries right in the top, and you can see it anywhere on that hill over there <coughs> right now. Uh, 
this is a poplar tree leaf. I have one at home that my brother carved, my brother Clarence carved out of a piece of wood. <laughs> This is young pop up tree. A Kentucky banana, hillbilly banana, who's your banana? <laughs> I never cared for them. My mom and dad loved them. Um, yeah, there's just so many of them. And even when we were driving, just so many and large ones too. What's been eating on that? It's a walnut. You see where a squirrel bit it, and he realized it was too light, and it wasn't any good, so he just dropped it and got him another one. <laughs> you said your brother Clarence brought you here years ago? Yeah. In 54. 1954. 1954. Look at all the walnuts. Squirrels ought to be really fat here. I'll walk to the bridge and then. We'll go back. Okay. Where's the eagle nest on this road? No, it's another trail, the Sycamore Trail. Oh, well. We don't have time for that. We didn't know that. We just took that. Oh, we'll see how things go. These bridges are in good shape, considering the amount of weather they're exposed to. I want Kanan to come hike with me here whenever there's been really heavy rain. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all the sandy silt that it washes down. Oh yeah, so see this trail hooks around and it goes back over there. And up, up there and on through. Wow, come in. Oh, I see. Look at the size of that tree. Looky there. Wow. Woo! Big white oak. Probably 400 years old. Yeah. Do you think next spring you'll be strong enough to be able to go up those uh, rough hewn steps to the top of that ridge? We'll have to see. Look at that tree going across the creek thing, the ditch. Bet you've been a lot of wild animals across that. Yeah. Well, we're going to go back up. Maybe see amazing, in, uh, where some juvenile uh, eagles might be next. <laughs> Okay, how to know north and south. See the moss? Yes. It only grows on the north side of a tree. That's north, south, west. That's the same over there. 
Mm -mm. It's really not. Okay. North, south, west. The sun's over here and back east. <laughs> so that's your shouting. You'll know who's walking up the trail. <laughs> Molly was flying around above it. This is where I saw her. We're looking for eagles. Young eagles. Uh, they stay black till they're five years old. An eagle's nest is this direction, as well as the um, haiku. So we're going to go see what activity there might be with the eagles. Here we are. Okay, we're here, because back in there are some so we're coming around here, and that's where she said we would find where there should be a nest area. Be they have haiku along the way. And uh, she said there's rest benches as well. This is the easiest trail that they have, and she would recommend it, a culvert. Oh, well, there's a hill there. Okay, so it's it's not flat. <laughs> wonder if they re-gravel um, in the winter and spring. Because there is a gravel down. The sycamores are huge, so tall, just so amazing tall. Dad said New York City has nothing on the height of these trees. They're just so tall. And that's why it's called Sycamore Trail. Beautiful. And you come during the week when it's a forecast for a rainy day, but you see that it's dissipating out. You get to be and it all by yourself like Dad and I. This is along the Sycamore Haiku Trail on our way back out. We went just past the uh, first bench about a third way to the second one. I went ahead on up the trail to the second bench, but that was another over 500 long strides so Another this is a good one
Oh, be before I fill up on space on my phone and it wants to stop again, uh, share like what raccoons do with the flat rocks. <laughs> That's a good tidbit. Up there around the bench, I th or uh, this deer crossing, we noticed it. A good rock for coons. Yeah, right in here with some rocks. Deer crossing. Well, he'll get around to telling us. I guess he's going to find the right spot. Go sit down and tell us a tale. Okay, tell us about what raccoons do with, at those flat rocks. Oh, <coughs> they take your front feet and reach back under the rock hunting for crawfish. And when they feel the crawfish, they'll grab it and bring it out and eat it. Okay. Uh, the reason you see so many sycamores uh, all over the world is that they're worthless. <laughs> the, the grain in the wood the wood grain is twisted and crooked and they can't saw it into lumber. If they make a board, it look real good when they first cut it. But when it dries, it gets crooked, twisted, won't lay flat. And that's why they don't use them for lumber. That's why we have so many of them. Now back in the pioneer days, they would take young sycamores, say 12, 20 inches in diameter, and use them for the first foundation logs on their new house. Well, they stayed up for hundreds of years like that. As long as you don't cut them or split them, they'll stay right there. And uh, it's very hard wood, but it's just twisted what they call a crooked grain, wood grain. And uh, that's why there's so many of them around. They're worthless. <laughs> Poison ivy's up there. This time of year, the leaves are all red. Mm. Terrible stuff, terrible stuff. Another good point to stay on trail is also stinging nettles. Ooh. Mm. They'll light you on fire if you walk through them. Back under the leaning pawpaw tree. I think that's how Dad would like the, his life to end. Just going through a wooded area to heaven. Wouldn't that be something? I would find that very peaceful if that was how the journey went.
I'm like an old Indian. I walk slow. Going slow makes for a better journey. You can admire a lot more on a hike. This is a bit of a little rise and then right there we are at the road again. Looky there. Almost time to sit down. <laughs> wow. What's the first thing you remember back in your, all the years back, cause you're 87 now, like being out in the woods at home and do you, what memories do you have of early nature? Well, when I was about eight years old, my mother started taking me into the woods to show me all the trees and things in the woods. Uh, maybe seven, eight-year-old. Uh, she told me there were two things in the woods I should never touch. And one of them was a mushroom, and the other one was a snake. And when you see them, go the other way. Walk around them, don't touch. See, my... My mother kept me as close to her as she could at all times because I was supposed to just fall over dead any second. And she wanted to be there when I died, <laughs> I guess. And uh, then the time I was a little over 10, uh, uh, I was still alive and kicking and didn't die like a doctor said I was supposed to. And uh, she kind of uh, let the lead strap be a little longer. And uh, she didn't spend as much time with me. She put you to work then. Do what? She put you to work then. Yeah. That's when you started working. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, chores, hard work. I was just a little over 10 and she told me, said, well, you didn't die. Like that doctor said, so get out here. I'm gonna show you how to work. <laughs> I live happily ever after. the end of our journey hope you had fun with us we'll see what we get into next time and he's agreed like this this is somewhere that's good and safe and there are people here and there to check on somebody so we'll be back We made it to the bridge, the covered bridge. To the right is um, the university uh, stadium and all of that, and a very busy highway. So the, it's a road that goes out there, but it takes you right on over to the university or Oxford, Ohio. So that's. Um, where a lot of people come and go. It's a beautiful place to go. That's checking out all the rocks. The
the black covered bridge, Pew's Mill. We'll do this first. One of the few remaining covered bridges in southwestern Ohio, the only one in Butler County on its original site, was built 1868 to 69. Give access to a saw and grist mill owned by James Pugh on Four Mile Creek, also called Talawanda. The wooden frame three-story mill had a 16-foot overshot water wheel to power it. Pugh's mill ceased operating after two decades. The name of the span gradually changed to Black Bridge, likely because there was a white covered bridge downstream near present State Route 73. The Oxford Museum Association assumed stewardship of it in 76, 1976. There we go. It was restored in 2000. It's beautiful. Definitely uh, one of the places to stop by and walk around when you're in the university area or uh, Houston Woods area. Because it's a huge, it's, it's big, a very big covered bridge. Oh, Dad's getting a phone call. It is under video surveillance, so people, mind your manners. But look, look at the age of these trees. Look at how big those are. Just massive. They're so big. Okay, here's a crack. Everybody likes peepholes, right? He's on the phone telling me he's tired. Oh, look, there's a, a wave. <laughs> oh, it smells good in here too. Mm, these old timbers. Imagine these trees and the whole history and story of these trees is pretty awesome too. Cause these beams, these beams like I can, I can't even hug them. Can't even bear hug them, they're so big. Beautiful work up there, isn't it? So grateful for places like this to be able to go and get out and it's nice and cool compared to some of the weather we were having before too much exercise for me I'll just come out here and walk there. He's so loud. I can hear his echo here. Lester. There's a nature preserve here, of course. You can walk around and enjoy. Place you can tie up your bike. Pet ways. I mean, oh, just I always love it how nice it is. So here is the covered bridge. There's Miami University, like Jaeger Stadium, for reference of where we're at. Um, and then this nature preserve goes along here. And there's even one that goes further out there in Houston Woods. So see, with all this free roaming and walking and trails, about an hour from my home, half an hour, 
Well, it's about an hour and 15 minutes from my home. Um, about 35 minutes from Dad's house. He'll sit and take a break for a little bit and rest up while we walk out through here. But you can push a stroller or a wheelchair around this area. So that can make it family friendly or an accessible option for folks. And you'll end up over at the university, but I'm not going that far today. Let's see, it goes way on through there. And after you go through the covered bridge, then it would loop back around. You have to look really quick when you're on the road to see the bridge. I think the trees are too thick to see the bridge from here. Yeah, you can't see it very well back here. You can see the end of it through the trees. There's Dad. Evidently, he decided he's going to walk the length of it. Wait until you see the sycamore on this side. Isn't that beautiful how they grew? So following along down there, it'll go out to the university, to like the football stadium area. And if we kept going ahead of us here, it would loop on around too. Look at these sycamores surrounding us. Wow. I'd like to have a house with a, um, just full of skylights to be able to look up at this and have some kind of heater on it to keep it down. The snow and ice and that in the winter so you can just see it all the time. Well, I think we had a good day. Yeah. Fantastic. Turned out beautiful weather. The rain's all gone. Skies are clear. Cool. Before it gets back up in the 80s for a few days. Perfect way to start fall. Look at the, look at the size of that one. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's that sycamore hiding in there. Well, the Miami River is definitely a good place for sycamores. All right, we'll close out just in case we don't get it. another time to say goodbye. Okay. Bye. See you next time. See you later, alligator. <laughs>